Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. I am Annette Capps, and today we have a special program on the subject of faith and confession with my friend, Pastor Michelle Steele. We will be discussing the topic that has always been the hallmark of the ministry of my father, Charles Capps. Through the revelation of the power of words, my father's life was transformed, and he shared this powerful principle with everyone he met. You must have an understanding of these principles and how they work for them to be effective in your life. It's not magic, and it's not a matter of following a formula. Your words are only effective in changing circumstances if you believe what you are saying. The first step is to put God's Word in your heart, and you can do that by speaking the promises of God out loud. I pray the Holy Spirit will open your heart to the message today. My name is Michelle Steele, and I want to welcome you to one of the most important programs you're going to watch all year. We have with us today on the program Sister Annette Capps, who is the president of Charles Capps, Capps Ministries, who um, her father, Charles and Peggy Capps, Charles Capps founded and changed my life. And so we're so honored to have you here today. Thank you for being on our program with us. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with you and to share the word. Well, we are going to emphasize some of the teachings from the word of God that the Lord ministered to your father and you have taken these and compiled them in a study course that is like a Bible school. Actually, what we have to talk to you about today, we have 14 DVDs and six CDs along with a faith and confession book and a study guide that you have put together and prepared for people to establish a foundation of truth. Tell me uh, where some of these things originated from and uh, the vision behind this product. Well, anyone that knows anything about Charles Capps knows that the main focus and emphasis of his work was faith and confession, yeah. the teaching of confession specifically. He was known as the word guy, the guy that <laughs> talked about your words. And um, these, this is a, the combination of, I'd say, what really marked his ministry. Uh, the Faith and Confession book, he always said, I said everything I wanted to say in that book. Yes. He said the things he wanted to say. So if you only got one thing from Charles Capps, that would be the book yes. you would want to get. Now, some people don't really like reading, so he taught a six-series uh, seminar on faith and confession, which the CDs are in here. Yes. And it's just a regular teaching like, you know, in a, in a seminar. And he said most everything he wanted to say about faith and confession in those six series. Uh, so the thing that hasn't really been out there is the Bible school that he taught. I believe there are 14 DVDs, yes. which are 14 45-minute sessions that he taught in a Bible school setting. So he wasn't interrupted by different things. He had a set agenda in mind. And yes, the DVDs are old and the audio and everything is not what we would have today, but the teaching is priceless. Yes. Absolutely priceless. If I could say something that sets it apart, you know, this is in a time when he was ministering this and probably under an anointing to minister it to students, that it came out so fresh and so clear. Details of stories that he tells later on yes. in his ministry are, there were details in here that weren't in the story. You know, it was like his, the freshness of the telling and the freshness of the revealing. And it really, I heard things I thought, 
I've listened to Charles Capps <laughs> for years and I didn't hear that the first time he yes. told that story yes. because he was telling things with such a clarity and, and a freshness. Well, he was taking his time. Yes. He was taking his time and he was explaining everything. You see, that's one of the reasons that he wanted to get this out, the book Faith and Confession, the other teaching, is because a lot of people misunderstood what confession was. They thought it was just some, oh, it's magic. You just say it 10 times and confess it and it just happens, you yes. know. They didn't understand the, the, un, the other part of it. They didn't understand the faith part of it. They, they just took it as, well, what some people call in a derogatory manner, the name it and claim it bunch. Yes. They thought all you have to do is just name it and claim it and you're manipulating God to give you something. But it has nothing to do with manipulating God. It has to do with speaking the word, putting the word in your heart, speaking it out of your mouth as a seed is planted into the ground of your heart. Yes. Because that's what Jesus said in the parable of the sower. He talked about the sower sows what? The word. The word. So if the sower sows the word, he's talking about the word being a seed. Yes. And this is what revolutionized my dad's life. You see, my dad was a farmer. Yes. From the time he was in his teenage years, he farmed, he plowed, you know, he furrowed it out. He broke the soil open and then they planted the seed. They covered it back up. They watered it. And then at the end of a period of time, a harvest came forth. Yes. And funny thing about it is whatever he planted, that's what came up. <laughs> yes. You know, you can't plant corn and go, I wanted soybeans because the seed and the life of the seed is in itself. Yes. And guess what? This word, the word of God is a seed. Yes. And so what he caught on to, what revolutionized his life is he learned he could take this seed. You don't plant the Bible in the ground. Right. You don't say, oh, this is a magic book. No, you take what it says, the words of Jesus, you take it and you plant it. How do you plant it? Jesus said it's the word. Yes. You say it. Yes. Out of your mouth. How do you become born again? You believe in your heart and you confess or profess with your mouth. Praise God. Yes. You speak. So this is what this is what happened to him. This is what happened to him. He read this all of his life. He was brought up in church, but it didn't change anything. He was negative. He had bad crop failures. And the worse the crop failure was, the worse he talked and the worse <laughs> it got. I remember him saying, if I plant a cotton seed on top of a post, you know, a fence post, a weed will grow up beside it and choke it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I heard him say that with my own ears. And so he didn't realize he had snared himself with the words of his mouth. Yes. And so what happened is he heard, he heard what words? He heard about right and wrong thinking, right and wrong speaking. And he decided that he would take the scriptures and speak those. I am prosperous. Whatever I do prospers. Why? Because the word is working in me. Yes. It didn't look like he was prospering. He lost money. Things went from bad to worse, but he kept saying, Thank God I give, it's given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over is it given unto me because I am a giver. There is no lack in my life. Yes. And whoa, all of a sudden, after a period of time, not overnight, but after a period of time, his crops began to yield better fruit. Yes. And not only that, he would ask the Lord when he should sell his crop. And the Lord would say, nope, don't sell it now. Don't sell it now. Don't sell it now. And then the Lord would say, sell it now. And he'd sell it. And he would make so much more money than all the other farmers that they would say, who's your financial advisor? He said, oh, I have a great financial advisor. <laughs> well, who is it? The Lord. Yes. Oh, you don't mean to tell me that, that God talks to you about your crops. Yes. God is interested in every part of your life, the simplest part of your life, the, the biggest problem in your life. 
the littlest problem in your life, God's interested because yes. your words, His word, will change that circumstance. I remember um, reading your father, a portion of his testimony about that time, and he said it took him a year almost of confessing those yes. to get to the point that the Lord could speak to him in a way that to bring the correction, to bring the direction that he needed to go. And as you mentioned, you know, he had been in church, he had read the Bible, mm -hmm. but he had not applied it like a seed sown in the ground. And when he started, he, he said he had that yellow legal pad and he wrote the, these confessions mm -hmm. out based on scripture with the scripture reference. And he would be out on his tractor and he would get off and walk between the turn rows and read those out loud to himself, speaking them out loud to himself. And it, it blessed me that he shared the fact that it took him almost a year to get to the point where he could, ha having renewed his mind and developed his heart, for God to be able to speak to him yes. the direction and the correction for that decisions. Yes, there's a, it's really important people <clears throat> realize there's an initial period where if I can use this analogy, you have poisoned yourself Yes, with words of negativity. You have poisoned yourself with listening to all the negativity in the wor world, the, the news. He would go to and sit in the cafe and listen to the farmers saying, well, we're going to go broke. You know, it's not going to have a good crop this year. We're going to go. He would listen to this negativity. That's like poison. Yes. That's just like drinking poison when you take that into your ears and into your mind and your heart. So it took that initial period. It's like you've been poisoned. And what's the, the solution for poison is dilution. It's a solution to dilute. Yes. And so this word, which the uh, Bible also talks about, the washing of the water, the word. Yes. Taking in this word, taking in, speaking this word and washing the poison out and replacing it with the good, pure water of the word of God. Thank God. I am born again. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. That is the washing of the water of the word. That's the solution to the poison that's, that you've taken in. And he had poisoned himself with negativity and yes. bad words. And so the initial thing is confessing the word the seed, the washing of the water, getting it in your heart and getting rid of the old bad stuff. Yes. At this point, you can't really speak much words of power because it takes rooting out the bad seed, rooting out the poison before you get to the point that you are convinced that you are who God says you are. He made the statement uh, here in the book, he said um, the first phase of confessing the word is simply make, causing faith to come in your yes. own heart. And that's what you're saying is yes. it's washing out the unbelief. doubt you've been speaking, the unbelief you've been speaking yes. and that you've been developed in. I remember your dad teaching about um, why, and it's in this book, why sometimes people can say something negative and it comes to, fa comes to pass so quickly and yet when they get ready to try to confess something, it takes them longer. And he said that person is probably highly developed in unbelief. That's right. <laughs> like the woman with the grow worse image, highly yes. developed in I've done everything, I've tried this, but when she started saying, if I can just touch yes. the hem of his garment, and so understanding that it's not just the saying it, like he would um, mention, and it's in this book as well, he said the um, saying it is not the only part of doing it. It's, it's, say, it's saying it alone won't make it happen, but right. saying it's like sowing the seed. Saying is involved in working it. Yes. And it working, you know. The it's saying involved. is the sowing. Yes. Uh, the important part is, is you've got to start with getting yourself changed. Yes. Until you change yourself, you can't really change your circumstances. 
And if your belief and your talking is always negative, if it's always, oh, well, every time we get ready to, to do something and have money for a vacation, the water heater goes out. Uh, this happens, that happens. We have to take the kids to the doctor. You are highly developed. When people say that, they really believe it. Yes. They really believe it. We're not going to be able to do that because every time we get ahead, something puts us behind. <laughs> yes. Every time I get healed of one thing, somebody else in the family gets sick. And they believe it. You see, saying it is involved in working it, but you must believe that the things you say come to pass. Yes. And most people don't believe the things they say come to pass. They think it's happenstance. Oh, yeah, I said that would happen, but that was just a coincidence. No, you believe it and you say it, and it keeps happening. So what happens? You tell somebody, I told them every time I do that, this happens. <laughs> and so then they, they tell somebody else, and everybody laughs and say, that's exactly how it happens. They're highly developed. They become highly developed in the wrong thing. You have to change that to faith in what God has said. You say Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. One translation says, faith is the substance of things hope that you hope for. It is the confidence or conviction or yes. being convinced Praise of the God. things you do not see. So when you're saying the word of God at first, you may not be convinced it's true. My dad said this. Thank you, Lord, you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I declare I have abundance. There is no lack. He sat there and he thought about it. And he said, Lord, I feel like I'm lying. <laughs> I feel like I'm lying. I don't have abundance. And God spoke to his heart and said, Son, how can you lie saying what I said? Yes. Praise God. God does not lie. God doesn't lie. His word works. And that's where we begin to divide between, yes, it may be a fact that there was no money in dad's bank account. It may be a fact that things look bad. But the truth of the word of God is greater than the facts and circumstances in your life. Always. 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 Amen. Praise God. When you first heard and you wanted a copy of my dad's teaching, yes. the fact probably was you didn't have the money to buy that teaching cassette. You didn't have the money to do it. But the truth of God's Word is greater than the fact in your life. Yes. And you took God's Word and did what with it? You spoke it. Yes. And what happened? I know you got it. <laughs> Look at what you've got now. I know you got it. You, yes. Things have changed. Changed my life. Because speaking is involved in working these things. It's yes. not the whole thing. And that's one of the reasons that Dad wanted to get this out is because the faith and confession message got such a bad uh, reputation in some areas because people would just grab it and say, oh, okay, all I've got to do is I'm going to confess I have a million dollars. Yes. And that, like it's magic. I don't have to do anything. I just say, I have a million dollars. I have this. I have a, I have a 10,000 square foot house. They name it and claim it, you know, is what the people who are speaking derogatorily about it say. And my dad saw these things happen and he wanted to take this, which is the pure message of the Word of God. Yes. And help people understand. It's not name it and claim it. It is a relationship with God. It is understanding what, what Christ has done for us. Yes. It is an understanding of God dwelling in us and the Holy Spirit helping us with everything that we do. Changing our words, changing our mind, changing our thoughts, our beliefs so that we are in step with God. Amen. And then it changes circumstances. Yes. For some people, prosperity may be just the ability to pay the light bill. You don't jump out and say, I believe I have a million dollars. God, I believe you. I, your word says you meet my need. I yes. believe for the money to pay that light bill. That's where you start. Yes. That's where you start. And then you don't turn around and go, it'll never happen, because that's negating it. So those are just some of the samples or examples and some of the reasons why he wanted to get this series out.
Yes, we're talking about a brand new resource that is being released by CAPS Ministry, which includes a 14 DVD and 6 CD Bible study course, Bible school course, as long as well as the book Faith and Confession with a study guide. And the information is on the bottom of your screen to get in touch with CAPS Ministries. This is such an important resource because in these teachings, it, there is a an established base of truth. There is all of the answers. It's more than just a formula. It actually has the, the full clarity of how to operate, what to operate, what not to do, a, a real balance, corresponding actions. And so I encourage you to invest in your spiritual well-being. And if you're watching me today and you've never received Jesus as Lord, your spiritual well-being begins. All of this understanding that we're talking about compiled in this resource is a, a supplement to the decision to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. He is your peace. He is the one who has paid the price by giving of his life on Calvary to redeem our lives from a sin nature, to cleanse us from every sin we've ever committed, and to give us a new life, an eternal life, that we begin walking with him in relationship. If that's you and you've never received Jesus, pray with me right now. Just open up your heart and out of the abundance of your heart, just say this, Lord, I desire to know you as my Lord, and my Savior, I believe you died on the cross for me. And I believe God has raised you from the dead. And today I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Lead me into the plan that you have for me. Show me how to walk in your will and in your word. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says if you have believed in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you are saved. And I want to encourage you to get into a local church and let your, your spiritual understanding grow and in, in take the opportunity to in, invest in your spiritual strength by, by going through this Faith and Confession Bible School. It's available through CAPS Ministries and we're so honored that Annette Caps would be with us today to share with us and be sure to watch the program for next week as well because we're going to be uh, continuing uh, talking about some of the important truths that are in this resource. Faith and Confession Bible School, it changed my life. I know it'll change yours. Well, thank you for joining us today for this special broadcast with Pastor Michelle Steele. Pastor Michelle graciously helped us with writing and publishing the Faith and Confession study guide that we spoke about today. And we are making this complete Bible school package available for $225 plus shipping and handling. There are 14 DVDs, six CDs, and then the 265 page book on Faith and Confession along with this study guide. Now this is a great package for personal study or for churches, Bible classes, and Sunday school groups. What is really outstanding to me is the anointing on these DVDs and the practical nature of that teaching. You know, it clears up so many misunderstandings on the subjects of faith and confession. Now for those of you who just want to dip your toes in the water, we are offering the book only by itself for $16 plus shipping and handling, or you can order the study guide It's by itself for $20 plus shipping and handling. That's a 265-page book on faith and confession for $16, or the faith and confession guide for $20 plus shipping and handling. Now, this is a very small investment for something that could radically change your life. Call 877-396-9400 or you can go to our website at caps.tv. That's C-A-P-P-S dot TV. Now I want to share with you some of the practical topics that are covered in this book. 
there's a, um, a subheading. It's called faith won't work in the head. Faith won't work in the head. Faith works in the heart. And my dad says, this is where so many people get into trouble. They try to operate faith out of the head. They think all they have to do is say it. They say, well, Mark 11, 23 says I can have what I say. So I'm just going to start saying the things I want. Well, a certain man said to a friend of mine, I'll tell you what, this faith and confessions teaching doesn't work. And he replied, oh, why do you say that? He said, well, I confessed 300 times in one day that I had a new car and I didn't get it. Well, you can see that all he had was the formula. He thought it was just some magic formula or something. He had the idea that if you just say it, the car will automatically appear in your garage. No, that is not the way it works. That is not the application of scriptural faith. All he had was the formula. He totally missed the principle. Faith will work, but faith must be developed. You know, we receive letters every day from people whose lives have been changed by these principles as they dedicated themselves to studying and acting on God's Word. Now, the important thing is that you dedicate yourself to the study of the Word because it will only work if you are fully persuaded that your words come to pass. You must believe that they come to pass. Now, I really believe this will be a blessing in your life. Call 877-396-9400 or go to our website at caps.tv. God bless you. May his best be yours. And may the word of God come alive in your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and in your body. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.